The One Stroke Video Library Series featuring Donna Dewberry is presented by Plant Enterprises Incorporated, bringing quality paints, mediums, stencils, and other tools to painters worldwide. Hi, I'm Donna Dewberry. I'm so glad you could join me. The one stroke technique is so easy that it's a pleasure to paint special touches for your family and your friends. Today we're going to talk about holiday painting, like Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. And the first thing we're going to do is begin by loading the brush. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a three quarter inch flat brush. I take this brush and I put it in water first. And then I'm going to lay it, let me put it here. I'm going to lay this brush on a paper towel and let the excess water go out. Now what I'm doing is I'm using flat brushes to do my blending, shading, and highlighting. And to load these brushes are the most important thing about one stroke painting. If we load enough paint in this brush and we put enough pressure, what's going to happen is that we're going to get beautiful blending, shading, and highlighting. And it happens in each stroke that you make. And that's why it's called one stroke painting. Not because you paint the whole object or the whole flower in one stroke, but each stroke you make gives you that. Now if you notice, I'm dipping, I'm really getting a lot of paint when I'm dipping. And then I push really hard. See how hard I'm pushing? I want to push almost down to the silver part of the brush, which is the ferrule. And I want to get the, the paint two thirds full, at least two thirds of the bristles. Now I'm ready to paint. And the first thing I want to do is paint some vines. And I do a lot of vining around pots and around um, bordering around pieces that I'm going to do. So when I'm painting, I'm picking out the two colors. If I feel like I need some water, I don't want you to use any water except for loading the brush. I'm going to dip right into the floating medium. See that? I'm going to work that in. And then I'm going to start right here. I'm kind of using my finger. I'm uh, leading with a lighter color. And I'm going to put my border around my clay pot or my plate or whatever I've decided or a cake dish. See this? And I'm starting on one side, trailing over to the other side, starting on one side, trailing over the other side. And I've done a vine. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start adding some leaves and pine needles because that's going to be a really fun project to add anything. You can add flowers to this. You can add ornaments hanging off of this vine. There's lots of fun things you can do. Now I've used the same brush on the white edge. I picked up a little bit of yellow and then I picked up green on the brown edge. I wiped a little bit of it off, but pretty much I left the paint loaded in the brush. Now what I'm going to do is to do the holly, which is kind of the same thing as a poinsettia and I'll show you that a little bit later. Now I've just stroked one half of it and I want to show you how uh, slowly how I do this from the other side. I'm going to touch, push, lift, push, lift, push, lift, all the way around till I meet there. And then I pull the stem in it. Now, see, I've gotten out a little bit fat, but I don't, you know, if it's a stroke, if it's a leaf I don't like, on the, I'll just overlap it with another one. I have all kinds of little tricks like that. All right, and then we'll put another stem in there. And even, this is the beauty of one stroke. Say I still, I didn't like the way that even covered, so look what I can do. I pick up fresh paint, and I'll restroke right over that. All right, and then re put my stem back in there. Now the other thing I'm going to show you, besides doing the holly, is how to put some pine needles in here. Now remember when you're on the chisel edge, when we're up here on the edge of the brush, I'm going to always lead with a lighter color, and I want to pull some pine needles and I'm taking my whole arm with me as I'm doing this stroke with the pine needles. I'm not turning the brush real drastically with my fingers and my wrist. Let's do it up, up here so you can see. My whole arm goes with me, okay? And it's okay if I, over, if I have those trailing yellow or, or green little, um, see how it overflows there a little bit and it's not absolutely thin and straight. That's okay too. All right, so now also, I, I just was thinking, I'll have some berries on here. 
So it's not too late to come here, put a branch, and then add some little stems. Okay, and we're going to put some berries on this in a minute. Okay, and all these are great fillers for the holiday when you're doing holiday painting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and get some, hey, and get another palette here. I've also dampened my brush already. And I'm going to pick up all the red. This is engine red. Side load into just a little bit of berry wine. It's not half and half this time. And I'm going to do a half circle one way and then a half circle the other way. All right, it's just back and forth. It's like kind of, you'd paint a grape like this too, okay? Half circle one way. And I kind of spin this in my fingers, turning it around. You can use a smaller brush. I got a big brush here, number 12, so you can see. Lost my shape a little bit. The only thing about doing this is you can keep getting the berry bigger and bigger and bigger, but that's okay. All right, but see how the darker the berry wine kind of gives it some nice shading instead of using all red, okay? And then we can come back. Let's get some white. I'm going to pick up a little bit of white on the corner here and even come back and do a little highlight in here. See how nice it kind of gives it a little highlight there? All right, then what I want to do is I want to take the same number 12 brush and I'm going to put some little white blossoms. Now the white blossoms might not show too well in here, so I'm going to put a little bit of soft green on here and I'm going to have some little bit of butter pecan on the inside. See, this is multi-loading. I'm putting multiple colors here. I'm stroking right in there and right on here I can start putting little clusters of flowers. Now it's nice to put these little white blossoms because what's going to happen is when you put those red berries in there, it really stands out. Now let's talk about how I'm doing these flowers. I'm going to maybe pick up some yellow too to show you yellow on the white edge and a little bit green on the outer edge and show you what starts happening here. I'm doing a teardrop. See that? I push, lift. Push, lift. It's like a little, each stroke's like a teardrop. And what I'm doing is I don't finish the five petals. I usually do about five petals on these. I don't finish the five petals when I'm overlapping. See that? I'm just occasionally every once in a while finish one complete blossom. Okay? Now, the, what's really pretty if, it, if you're on a colored background instead of a white, and I'll show you right here, it's nice to put that on the uh, yellows and tans on the inside and have the white. See how crisp that white is on the outside edge? And that looks good if you have a colored background or if we're painting on glass. See that? The whites really stand out. Now to finish this flower, see it's just a little pretty cluster. To finish the flower, I would use like my script liner, use the end of that, and just dot the center. And see if that yellow is not enough, what I might do is come and put a little bit of green, okay? And you can dot numerous dots, you don't have to just do one, okay? And then you can come back and then dot a little brighter yellow in the middle, okay? And just do that to a few of them, and it really makes a nice accent. Now what I wanted to show you is if at this point, say I want to paint a poinsettia. Now we kind of went over this holly, but I want to show you how I painted the poinsettia with the same strokes, but how to build that. And I'm doing the same thing. I want it mostly engine red, and I'm picking up just a little bit of berry wine on the edge so that, kind of like side loading into that. I think I'll get some floating medium. All right, and let's come right here. We're going to start here, and we're going to push, lift, push, lift, push, lift. Now I'm painting on poster board right here. And when you're painting on poster board, it's real slick and smooth, but, which is kind of how it might be on a pot, too, sometimes, or especially glass. But see how the color is kind of transparent there? Now, if you're on a heavier or something that's kind of painted rather than it's got a base coated painted surface, like a clay pot or a piece of wood, you're going to get a thicker coverage than this, especially paper. Okay? Now, I'm going to pull the stem right then. Then I'm going to come right here and overlap. And see, it's good to do that while that's wet. So if you overlap it, you can erase kind of by the next stroke. Now, guess where your eyes are supposed to be looking? At the, each time you're doing this stroke, your eyes should be watching the outer edge of that stroke because that's what's going to give you your shape 
of each petal that you're stroking. Remember, pick up fresh paint and go right over it if you think it needs more. If you're not happy with what it turned out like. All right, so we're just going to continue to build this. Now, I usually stroke things that I paint on the walls, and so it's easy to stand in and easel to do. And what people continuously ask me is, when they're painting, should they be up on an easel? Now, let me tell you, I've done most of my painting in my life at my dining room table. And I would suggest that you put that pot or whatever right on that table right in front of you or put it down your lap as you're working and move it around. Because to be honest, up here like this on the easel is very difficult to do a poinsettia because it's not a difficult flower. You could come at this end and do it reverse this way. It's usually easier the other way. But what you want to do is your eyes need to keep on these peaks and make sure they're nice nice and definite. Now, let me tell you what's so fun about this is when we're coming in to do the center, you, we're going to take and dip this green, dot this, or you can dot the green and the yellow at the same time. See how I have, I, how I have both colors? And you can even get really good. I take and put um, pictures of a poinsettia in front of me, and sometimes they have a lot of airy space in between each petal. And can, you can concentrate on doing that, and it's pretty too. And it looks more realistic the more detail that you go to. Well, what I want to show you at this point is let's talk about some bows and adding some bows to some pieces. And if I was to do this, I would put, I did a, a, like an ornament. Let me show you this. This ornament here, see this? I would put the bow in the background, which is very important. And so I want to talk about how I would add it on here also because I would add the string ribbon or the bow onto the vine before I start putting all the green leaves. And let's do this again. Let's do a big one first. All right, we're going to pick up the very wine. Let's come over here. We're going to push left. Let's do the other side real quick because it's fun. You chisel, push, stand up, push, stand up. Now see, with one stroke, it looks like that's a folded ribbon, which makes it really fun because it's so easy. Push, turn your brush, push the other way. Now my wrist is not turning. What's happening is that as I'm doing this, I'm chiseling, pushing, chiseling, pushing. I'm making my bristles turn side to side, but I never turn this in my hand. Now all you do at this point, you can make this bow like two or three extra loops if you want to, but then you have to just tie it together with your strokes here at the end. Now that's one kind of bow, and you can even go back. Now I did that with a large brush so you could see it really well. But you can even go back afterwards, but you would have to let it dry, which you normally don't have to do. But I would go back afterwards and even put some striping in there into the bow after it's totally dry, especially with some Inca gold that makes it really pretty. Now I'm going to show you some inky, inky, inky paint right here. I've gone right here where I was loading. I picked up water. Only time I use water is with a script liner. Two or three times I picked up water, worked in that till I have an inky consistency. Rolled my brush out of it, and now I'm going to do a string bow. And to do the string ribbon, I'm standing straight up on the chisel edge. Okay, I'm sliding down and then up. Now what you don't want to do is try to come in here and work out. That's hard. You want to go out and then, oops, see, messed up. What you want to do is go back over that. See if I messed up like that? Let me show you what I do. I will just add a whole bunch more than I expected so I can cover up anything I didn't like. See that? It's magic. Go over it two or three times. So they equal. Or you can just have one little string bow, which I'll, we will do on some projects later. All right, then we very easily just pull down from there. And then I like to tie it. Let's tie it onto the branch. See that? It's just a little teeny stroke. So that's kind of fun. Let me show you with the same script liner what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint some of this inky gold, which I don't know if you can tell that this is iridescent, but it's really, it really classes up a piece, especially for the holidays, and give it a little bit of glitz. And this is paper, so it dried pretty quick, but that's not necessarily what's going to happen on your wood piece. You want to give it a while to dry, okay? 15, 20 minutes before you start doing something like this, probably. Now, see this? I follow the curve that I've done in the ribbon. We pick up fresh paint. See that? You don't want to push too hard, and you want to stay right up at the tip of the brush. 
Isn't that fun? Now, let's paint an ornament. And I'm going to use the same colors because that's what we're working with here. And you'll see that it looks good. When we pick up one color, say if I'm doing a light, I want to do a purple ornament, I would do a light purple, like a violet pansy, pick up engine red. No, black is purple. On this one, I'm picking up engine red. And I'm going to take, remember, you can trace your pattern of, of the shape of ornament, ornament you want to paint. And follow, your eyes are supposed to be following all down. Now, see, I need to be in front of this to make sure that it's not too crooked, okay? You're going to come down, around, and touch. Beauty of this is, I don't like it still, so I can go over it again. There we go. And then we fill in. Remember, you get your outer shape, then you brush back and forth to fill in. Now, see how quick it looks like I've worked hard to get shading and all, and you saw that. I just put all the paint on my brush at one time. I can even accent right here that there's a curve. Come back down here even and accent that there's a curve there. Okay, but now we have to let this totally dry before we start adding detail. But I want to go ahead and add the top the hanger from here. All right, I'm going to get a little bit of yellow ochre. This is the deal. When I'm using the Inca Gold, it doesn't really show well if you just paint the Inca Gold because it's kind of transparent and you can see through it. So what I want to do is I use um, like sunflower, a light yellow, and then work in some Inca Gold. No, excuse me, work in yellow ochre. And then we're, before we put the Inca Gold on it, all right, then we're going to make the top, the hanger. I'm just stroking it right here. And this is like a base coat, which you usually don't have to do with my technique. But because I'm doing that ink of gold, I want to have that base coated area there. Because what we're going to do on top of that, when that's totally dry, is we go back and we just put the ink of gold right on top. And you can still see the shading through it because it's kind of transparent. And then we have some licorice. Well, you know what? I'm going to paint the pine cone and let that dry a little bit. And I'm going to add a pine cone on here because I think you're going to like seeing another little element that, that's really great for the holidays, and especially during the fall season, too. Well, that's drying, and then we'll come back and put some highlights. Now, this is almost all butter pecan. Same thing, a flat, number 12, smaller. And you can go all the way as small as a number 6, probably, depending on what size your pine cone is going to be. And this is also, when I make a sheep or when I make an angel and I'm doing wings, I'm doing this little stroke right here. It's kind of like a C stroke. All right, you're making a C, but it's kind of upside down here. And I want to concentrate, remember what I told you, your eyes need to look at the outer, oops, put a little bit too much there. Your eyes need to look at the, the um, outer edge that's going to show as you're building this. And the edge that's going to show is those little segments that are on the pine cone, okay? So we're going to put all those in there. And what looks really pretty, this is the butter pecan in the brown. Well, it looks really pretty to put golds in here too, like the metallic golds. And it makes a really nice added piece. Grab it here, pull it to your branch, and then put pine needles around it. Now, let me go back down to the ornament. Let's see if it's dry enough that I can put some little detail on here. Ink of gold. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around here with a band. And all the, I do a lot of different ornaments, and I just come back and highlight afterwards with colors like Inca Gold or Work of White. Now what you're going to do is we're going to do a crisscross across here. And you'll see it sometimes this is glitter even on your ornaments. So you make it disappear out here, then start at one of these spots here and crisscross. Now see, isn't that easy? But there's little tricks that make it, make it happen so it's easier for you if you just see step by step how that's done. Then I come back and I dot all these spots. And each dot ought to be picked up from a clean puddle. Don't do it from a dried puddle, okay? From a clean puddle. And you can also come in the middle and do some of those, but I'm just basically going all the way around wherever it touches. And to finish up our piece, we're gonna come in here and we're gonna use the licorice to make our little hanger. And I love to put these on t-shirts and all too. These are really fun to do these little ornaments. I do see these pine needles. I do pine needles all over my sweatshirt. And then I come back and paint long skinny ornaments, big fat ornaments. I'm trying to move my hand back there. 
right here. I outline this a little bit, which isn't quite dry, but I still think you can see. And then I make a nice little hook there to hang it by. Oh, isn't that fun? Lots of things you can paint it on, so just be creative. Let's take a look at some project ideas that you can make using the techniques you just learned. The first thing I want to show you is how fun it is to paint on glass. Look at that glass uh, cake dish. What's so fun about them is they're inexpensive, they make great centerpieces and great gifts. What I used when I painted on this glass cake dish is an apple barrel gloss paint so that you could bake it in the oven, usually about 8 to 15 minutes at the max, and you bake it and then you let it come out and cool off and then you can hand wash it. But what's so fun about the glass is that you can use white and not even worry about those petals showing without shading even. I did put a little bit of like a light green to shade those, but I just had fun doing that and some stripes at the base of it. Then I used a clay pot. Now clay pots are great gifts. You can fill them with goodies or, or they're great gifts to sell even. I mean product, things to sell for the holidays. And you can see if you put any kind of colored background, I use like a silver spray paint on this and then put those little white blossoms and I held the white on the outside and the color on the inside like I was showing you earlier. What I want to show you with these um, paper pop-ups that are so fun is that you can do a different dressing for each season. And this season, I decided to put the simple pine needles and then use it at like a slip cover over my lampshades. And then what I did was do all those ornaments, which you can then later also cut out and do wood ornaments to match each one of those. And I also did it on candles where I took the pine needles. I didn't have to do anything fancy with candles. You just want to make sure you don't use a candle that has lots of oil in it. So the least expensive, the better. And so that, that's usually the scented candles. And I used the tray of a clay pot for the base to sit that candle in and put the, the little berries on here. I just dotted with the ink of gold. And the same thing with the glass. I used, my, I used and sponged the, the base of the glass with white and then put the little um, poinsettias on it also. Now when we look at our ornaments, what I like to show you about the ornaments and, and tell you a little bit about that I like to do is if I can't cut out wood, these are all wood cutout ornaments, but if I can't cut out wood, uh, personally, don't have a saw, I'm not able to do that, I don't want that to limit you from doing ornaments, use heavy duty watercolor paper or use vinyl floor covering and paint the back of the vinyl floor covering and you can cut all those out with scissors. And these make great gifts. First ornaments I did for my tree ever. I couldn't afford a whole tree full of ornaments, so I made all my ornaments. Aren't those fun? I really enjoy doing them, and I enjoy giving them as gifts because they're all handmade by me. So get in the holiday spirit and paint. Snowmen are as much fun to paint as they are to build. What I want to show you is a charming little plaque that I do and give as gifts, and I love to personalize it because people love things that are personalized. But what I think is so fun about these snowmen are that I use lots of blue in here instead of the traditional like brown tones that I might normally use. And they have cute little carrot noses and rosy cheeks. And I want to show you how to paint these. The first thing that I do is I take my scruffy brush, which we've got right here, and I feather this brush out really good so it's nice and fluffy. And you want to paint with this when it's dry. So what I'm going to do at this point is take and pounce this brush all white. And when we do it all white, we want to really push hard so it's all up into the brush. Okay? Now, I'm going to take, pounce just ever so lightly on the edge of the sterling blue color. And I found that when I was painting pieces on white pots, I would have a problem with letting it show Mate, letting it still show because it was a white piece and I couldn't get the snowman without putting lots of brown and I got tired of that so I thought this blue color makes it really a new fresh look for any of you have seen, who have seen some of my snowman before and if you haven't then you're going to just have a whole new thought process when you go to paint these snowmen because I thought it's kind of like it's cold and icy outside and it gives you that illusion also when you're doing the flakes if you're on a piece and the white doesn't show, you can do little soft blue snowflakes and I'll show you some of those later. So see how I'm pouncing around? First thing I do is concentrate on the outer edge, okay? And then pounce and fill in the middle. Now I'm going to take a small scruffy and I'm going to come in here 
and pounce just a little bit. I'm going to take a little bit of this berry wine just because I want some pink. Now, you know, this is small. You might can use, if it's a really big snowman, you can use your scruffy, bigger scruffy, but I think the small one's good here. And just remember that some of the wood pieces, you can hear me really pouncing on that because I don't want it really light. Some of these pieces, you can just paint your piece first and then cut out the design afterwards after you get that shape really good. All right, now we want to do a carrot nose. And I've got my paint running all around here. Hopefully you can still see this. I'm going to take a number six flat, work in white, and then I want to just work in a little bit of orange here. This is pure orange, really bright. And I want this really yummy looking carrot right here in his right where his nose would be, okay? So what, the first thing I do is I do the little curve to get myself going. And then I watch that upper edge. See, I ran out of paint. So what we want to do is make sure that we go back, pick up a lot of paint, more paint than I just had, so that when you're doing this, you have enough. Then I'm going to come back, do the bottom edge of the, the nose. See that? And you can still come back here and do a little bit of an accent in here. All right. Now you can make it brighter or lighter, whatever. And I go back with a script liner and I might accent that a little bit. You usually don't have to, with one stroke, let anything dry first. But with this, because we're putting so much paint with the scruffy, it does help to let that dry. So what I want to do really quick while that's drying is I'll just go ahead and put the hat in here. So I'm going to make this hat mostly blue. Let's, let's do some strokes on here, mostly blue. I'm going to get a little bit of floating medium because I'm on this paper. So if you feel like it's dragging, go ahead and get some floating medium and work it in. All right. I'm going to work that in. Get this blue in here. He's got a cute little stocking cap, okay? Remember, you can use patterns or draw it with a pencil first instead of trying to freehand it like I'm doing. But I like to just kind of fill in, make all kinds of shapes of hats so you don't have to be too picky with it. Okay, and I'm not worrying about shading it because I'm going to come back later and put some striping and stuff in here. But now I'm going to put his rim on here and I'm using the scruffy brush with a whole bunch more blue this time. Okay, and maybe hold the white down. No, nope. see I need some white up here. And the blue down. Let's come up here there. I'm going to hold this so it's not so noisy. There we go. Do that. Now look how fun and easy that is. Quick, 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 quick. Now what I'm going to do is take, let's put some stripes. I'm going to use the white to do the striping with because we're on the blue. See, I'm going to add a little bit of white. Got my water a little bit too far over there. I'm going to pull it over here so we can get it easier. So next time, the only time I use water, I don't want you to see, get a bad habit going. The only time I use water is when I'm doing the script liner work. See this? Now remember, this, dry, this dried pretty fast because I'm on paper, but you, gotta, you have to make sure this dries before you try to put small detail on because it gets all muddy. And I also like to come back up and maybe flip, you know, a little, like the little furry top here. You can put a pom-pom with your scruffy, or you can take your script liner and just feather it out. All right. There we go. Now, if I get too much blue, just remember all you do is come back with an extra little bit of white back through it to pull some more highlights. See that? And I didn't even add water that time. I just picked up some white. Now, we're probably about ready so that I can go back and put some of the detail like the eyes. And you can do a scarf just like we did this up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, instead of black, because you know black can be kind of harsh, and we have a softer look going here, I'm going to take some inky, make this inky, some inky burn number, and I'm going to make the outline of the eye. See, I'm going to kind of place my eye there. See, this one's a little bit bigger. See how you just kind of play with it? And I just kind of like to just randomly do little teeny strokes in this area. So it's not so, like it's not a filled in exact look. I kind of think that's fun. All right, it gives you a lot 
deeper look here. Now, you can go up above this and put little teeny eyebrows, or you can do an extra little crease. See this little crease here? Then, look at this. Just pull the little lashes. You can make it like a little girl or a guy, depending on how fluffy you make his eyes. Now, if you've gone, got carried away and you covered most of it up, you can still go back here and put a little highlight with some thick white there to highlight that. Now, there's two options you can do. You can come in here before you do the nose and do his mouth. Or what I do is I come right here. I always forget, and so I like to come in later and do his little smile. And then come right along here, really loosely, not exact, and do the little creases in the carrots, right? Now, I like doing snowmen a lot. They're great, especially if you want to sell things. They sell really well. And let me, what I want to show you is how to build a whole snowman really quick. I want to show you, we're going to do this. And I've done this on metal a lot. It's really great on galvanized because the metal just shows so fun, this white. It just pops out. See how I'm layering from the bottom up? You got to make sure that you keep that dark down so you see the separation. Okay. And then I want to show you when we're painting the branches, I just took the white, stroked my script liner in some brown, and I pull these branches. Make sure that you see white. See, I lost that white. Do the branches like that. Do all your other little detail that, like, use the brown on the end of it and do your buttons, like, with a handle. But what I want to do before we finish making our snowman and go to our next project, I want to show you about do how I would do snowflakes, especially if I was on, really quick, on the metal or something. Well, not the metal. The metal you can use white. But if I'm on a surface that's white, I would just use the blue. And then you can use the midnight or the sterling blue. And then I just came back in and dotted all these spots like this with the handle of the brush. Or you can come right here and add even extra little lines, and you have a snowflake. I want you to enjoy painting your snowman. They're, they're a little bit more time consuming than some other painting, but boy, are they fun. And actually really easy. Every painting project presents a new opportunity to learn a new technique. Take a look at this nativity scene. What I love about this nativity scene is that it's dark with the dark blue in the background, which makes the stars just stand out so pretty when you use the metallic paint. I started with the, the hay and the, the crust that it's sitting in, and then I painted all the people in front, and the wise men and the uh, Mary and Joseph and the baby. But the baby was painted first in the very back, and then we put the animals on last. So the first thing I want to teach you how to paint is, let's do a wise man, and then that'll show you how I build the person as we go and put in his chest and his hand. And what I'm going to do first with these paints is I'm going to decide what I would paint first on him. And I've kind of traced it out here really lightly, which you might not be able to see, but I can see. Just to give, so don't feel like you have to do it freehand, because I wouldn't. I would go ahead and put the proportions in just for the people because it makes it easier. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my skin tones and I'm going to paint in his face and his hand because that's going to be in the background kind of. All right, that would be the first thing I think I would attack as I'm going at this project. Okay, after I've got all the backgrounds that I just talked talk to you about, I'm going to watch the outer edge. Remember I told you, you use that edge of the, the uh, paintbrush the outer edge like a pencil to fill that in, okay? To get your shape and then I fill it in. And then I'm going to come back with a little bit of um, maple syrup. Or you can use some uh, pink colors if you want to. But I just kind of do that with the skin tone. It looks fine because he's a man anyway. You don't need that right rosy cheek. Now I put that there. But then this is probably, this chest back here should probably be painted first. But it kind of helps me with placement. And I will try to stay away from that because I don't want that gold to show through. What I Remember what I told you when I'm using Inca Gold that it looks better many times to paint a color first. So 
So I'm not worrying about right here where the beard's going to go. I don't know if you can see that pencil line. It's pretty, it's pretty light here. But I'm going to come down with the shape using the dark color along the edge. I'm going to try to miss that hand, but if I don't, I don't worry about it. And go back and remember, just add more paint and paint it over again. Okay? Then I'm going to come right here and do the top edge. Come all the way around. And then fill in. Now, on each gift that the wise men bring, I kind of do the same type of effect. Because we're doing the inky gold and we want to do detail, remember all detail goes on when it's all dry. All right? Now, the next thing I would do, I wouldn't put the headpiece on or, or the beard because it's going to all overlap onto the clothing. So I'm going to take, I want this clothing to have folds in it. So the easiest thing is to pick up a lighter color, which I'm using a violet pansy here. I got some floating medium, so it flows pretty well here. And then one edge has the darker purple. Now I'm going to come down, do his rope, follow his folds along the bottom, and then I'm going to start filling in. Now I might just come over here and pick up Violet Pansy mostly, and I'm going to disappear up there to where the arm's going. When I come down here, you might come down with a little bit of purple on the outer edge, so that as you're getting those folds, See how that purple, I just work it in. Now just seeing this happen sometimes makes it a lot easier for you to be able to stroke it, okay? See, that's a good point to show you. You're going to run out of paint sometime. Just pick up more paint and then just keep working it in, okay? Now, we're going to come right here. We're going to do his arm. Now his headpiece is going to go over this, so I'm going to not worry about covering over where the headpiece is going to go. Then I'm going to come right around here. That's his sleeve, okay? Now you can do lots of detail with banding and ink of gold and stuff, but what's important here is that we get a few more folds in. See this? We want some folds in the robe. See, I'm going to come back over here a little bit, then put my fold here and work backwards. See, it looks better to go like this. See, I didn't like how it looks, so I just restroke it. Remember, makes it really easy. Now, he needs his beard in here. So his beard, I'm going to use the maple syrup with the burnt umber on the outer edge so that we can get his beard in here really good. All right, so I'm just, there's all kinds of beards you can do. This one I kind of made a little... Like it might be have a little curl to it, okay? See, it's just got a little bit, a little bit kind of like that C stroke I was showing you. And just kind of fill this in. See that light brown and dark brown kind of gives you a little accent. And then you can use a script liner, or I'm going to see if I can do this with, put his little mustache in there with the edge, chisel edge of that brush. See there? Now, what we're going to do, I'm going to take the script liner while I'm there. And go ahead and put maybe an eyebrow. And then, I, it's always easier to do a closed eye, so let's act like he's praying. And then we can put a little detail on the eye here, or you can even put a few lashes on Mary if you want to. All right. Now we're going to come in with a heavier purple. Bring it right in here. Okay. Now, I did that almost all solid because I wanted some contrast. And you can do it another color, too. You don't have to do it purple at all. All right, work that in. Now, see, they're not difficult to paint. It's just you have to take and do the steps. And what's in the back first and what would be in the front. And then if you make a mistake, just start over and paint the, paint the thing that would be in the back over. And don't worry about it. I went back and did some detail, but what I want to show you is how I would do this the donkey over here. And I used, I wanted some grays and some, I've got some licorice here. And what I'm going to do is get some of this lighter tone of gray by working the white and the black together. Okay? You can pick up a gray color, but I pretty much like to get these shaded shades in there like this. Remember what I said, the outer edge. 
Same thing you do with all figures, is that you kind of fill it in, okay? And then you go back and accent. Now see, I've started to put his face right here, but look, we've got to put his neck first. All right? Then we can come back and put his head, it would go right on top of here. Okay. Then his, his back leg. See, lots of paint. You'll see. See how I'm doing it? I don't let it stop me. If I didn't have enough paint, I just go back and restroke it. Then his chest. Then his leg. And then we fill in. Okay. All the way in here. We come back here to this part of the leg. And then you can do lots of detail on his hoofs and stuff when you come in here. See, I might put some hoofs in here. And then go back and do some of the hair later. Going to come back. This is a smaller brush now. Do his back ear. And I went ahead and put his back ear in here th now because I'm going to put a mane in front of that. So it doesn't matter. That was behind the head. And... And I'll put his tail in here. His mane, so you can do lots of detail, and that's all we're going to do. And that's how you build him. Very simple. Then we go back, just like when we're making the star, we're making the detail on the jewel box. To do all of our detail, I'm using just simple strokes. I'm taking, I'm dotting, I'm dotting along here. Especially if you use the Inca, it shows. I'm putting the braids and the headpieces with our color here. The shiny gold makes a beautiful contrast. So you can really get into this and put lots of detail. I'm not going to put a whole lot. But this is the same way when I'm doing my star. I'm going to continue to come, put all kinds of detail. And you can look at my picture of the nativity again. You can look at what I showed you earlier and see that we did lots of detail and you just keep adding it to it. And with the star, I wanted you to know that we take and we start on the chisel when we do it. And then we continue to build from the center out. And we just use all sorts of colors. And I, I rotate from the, the darker yellows to the iridescent golds. And then I come in with some white and you just get all kinds of beautiful illusions from that. And it's a piece I would love in my house, and I think you will, too. Fall is one of the most colorful seasons of the year. The rich spice colors lend themselves to wonderful painting possibilities. Let's take a look at some of the projects that you can paint to celebrate this time of the year. What we have is we have all kinds of beautiful, colorful leaves, and I think you're going to have so much fun with those because you can put them on a variety of possibilities like glasses and wood. I put it on wood buckets. I've even put them on candles, which, are, which I enjoy decorating with. I have the, the Horn of Plenty with all the fruits and vegetables, which are so easy to paint. And I have a lot of fun doing those when, my de when I'm decorating my table. And then we're going to do some topiaries for the holidays for Christmas time. Or you actually could use them any time of the year. And I put it on glass so we can decorate our table setting with those. And what I love a lot about um, starting the season, every fall season starts with Halloween. So what I want to show you is this fun clay pot. And I started with clay pots. And they're a very inexpensive surface. So they're fun to paint, sell well, give great gifts, fill them full of goodies. And I have these puzzle grams, which I thought was a pretty clever idea. Look at this. You can take and glue two thin pieces of wood together. You cut out the first layer and glue it to the bottom layer and paint those. Those make really fun things to send through the mail to friends. Well, the first thing we want to do when we start is we're going to paint our pumpkin. And I'm going to come up here and start double loading my brush. And I'm going to use some yellow and some orange here, pure orange. Let's get a little bit of school bus yellow. And we kind of lay in the shape of our pumpkin first. And actually, pumpkins are so easy. And I have a little gauge to start that. You want to get your paint two-thirds full. We're going to go the outside edges first. 
okay? And then we start putting our segments right in here. And you can even pick up some um, darker shades like raw sienna, see? The, and just go over it if you want the shades to be darker. Just enjoy this, have fun with it because painting these pumpkins are really easy and you don't have to do the shading and base coating and all in, adva in advance like you have to do with a lot of techniques. We're just gonna do it as we go. Anything I don't like, see this last stroke, I'm coming in and going back over. Now, I'm going to cover most of that because I'm going to put my teddy bear in here. And so what we're going to do, I don't want him to be too dark. I want him to be cute and light here. So what I'm going to do is the first thing on the teddy bear is his ears because it's in the very back. So I probably would pencil this in, but I'm just kind of winging it here. We're going to put his two ears. All right. And then we're going to come back in here, put his head. And I'm dressing him up in a pumpkin costume. I thought that was kind of fun. You don't have to do his whole body. We're just going to do his head and his arms. So you just pounce around, getting the shape of his head, coming back, putting in his, where his nose is going to go, right here. See, I'm doing it mostly white, putting just the maple syrup on the outer edge, on my scruffy, and pouncing it around. Same thing here. We're going to just come in afterwards, and you start adding your arms. Just make him look like he's sitting in this, cute little pumpkin outfit, okay? Real simple strokes. Actually, they're not even strokes, they're pouncing. And then we put his feet in there. And I usually don't have to let anything dry, but I'm gonna kinda let that dry and go to my next project so that um, I can come back and put details. Remember, it's always easier when the, this is dry before we put our details. What I wanna show you is how I put in some fall leaves. I come in here in the bottom after we get his feet and on and on, and I'm going to put in some bright autumn colors for the fall. Now, what happens here is I kind of alternate the colors, bring in some pretty reds, and all you have to do is go out, and many of you who live in, not Florida, but other uh, northern areas have the changing of the colors. So all you do is go out, look at some of those leaves. Now I'm just kind of creating one, <laughs> so let's hope this turns out like one. And what I'm doing is, I'm, my eyes are watching the outer edge of this. See this? The outer edge of the leaf. Same thing here. You can come back around here. You can make this a one continuous stroke. See? You can come right along here, a continuous stroke. Come back down. And then we pull a stem on it. And what I've done on some of these projects that we'll be picturing, you'll be looking at, and we were just looking at earlier, is I went back, which I usually don't do, but it was kind of fun on these, is to put a little bit of veining in here. And remember, those same shapes can be green, too. So what, what I do also on the, on the pumpkins when I'm not putting the costume on the teddy, I will come up at the top and do a few leaves. So you could do a couple of leaves up here if you wanted to, to give him a little accent. I always like to put some leaves down at the bottom when I'm not going to have him as a teddy bear, just when we put him in the Horn of Plenty. There you go. Now, let's take and let's put a little, little bit of detail on that pumpkin. We're going to come in here with our licorice, the smaller brush, and we get the outer shape and then we fill in. Gonna make his two eyes. Whoops. That's why it's easier with a script liner probably around the edge. But I always have no patience, so I just go right into the sky. And then I'm gonna come around, make sure he has a little tooth here, just like you're carving your pumpkin. And just make sure he has a nice big smile. Fill it in, and then we're gonna highlight him. Okay. It's also easier when you're not up at the easel. <laughs> okay, we're gonna fill this in. Put a little highlight. I do use my script liner for that. You come back in here, put a little highlight. It starts giving you some character. All right, and just be creative. Your kids like doing those because they're so much fun. Actually, these teddy bears are a great one for the kids to do. They're really fast and simple. Now, what I wanna do is show you a cornucopia. And when we're starting this guy, what we're going to do is we start in the very back. 
and we're going to go one stroke here, whatever is the furthest distance. So that's going to be the very back of this cornucopia. So as we're doing the horn, see how I'm making these like little C strokes? And I'm just going to get larger and larger. Remember, you can trace this out with a pencil kind of if you want to. I like to get greeting cards and get cute ideas off of those. Coming all around, and I'm going to put all the vegetables and fruit in front, as you saw where I painted those in the front. All right, I might come here, kind of fill this in, just because that's going to be my background. And then you can also come in and do a little bit of a twist here on the outer edge. And you really don't see much of this because we put all the fruits and vegetables in around it, but it makes it kind of fun to have it there. Now we're going to pull out some purple, and I want to come in here and show you, this is how I do all the vegetables and all the fruits, is that we're going to come in here with whatever color you have. I want to do this purple, I want to put some shading, but look at this. Add a little bit of floating medium so it moves. All we're going to do is follow the outer shape. This is an eggplant. Follow the outer shape. And then all you do is fill it in. See how I'm smoothly following the same shape? I don't just do this little padding in here. Nice, long, smooth shape. All right, same thing happens. Apples, plums, grapes. I showed you a little bit earlier how we would do that. And then we just always come in afterwards and fill in with really pretty little leaves. And it just kind of sets it off. So the most important part is you get the horn in first. You start laying out your fruits and vegetables, like the pumpkins, like we just showed you. OK. Oops. Not very good. See that? Pull your stems. Do some small leaves, too. You can even add. OK. Now let's come in here with the topiary. What I want to show you with those is I always do the base first. And there's all kinds of fun bases you can do. I'm going to take, this is going to be small, and then I'm going to come down. That's the ba the very the pedestal part. And these I did on glasses, so you can enlarge this if you want to. Here's the shape of the urn. And then see, you always fill in. See how I hold the darker colors to the outer edge? And then you can even do that same twisted cording, kind of, like I put around the cornucopia. Oops. Then I want to make sure, make sure that you put your trunk, whatever you're going to do. Let's do a wide trunk here, because I'm going to have two little balls of greenery. Now, I'm going to have a lot of white in this, because it looked pretty. OK, see how hard I pounced? Really, really hard. Oops, you can't see that green too well on here. Oh, there we go. It was the white I was worried about you seeing, but you can see that. Okay, and then we're going to come up here. Okay, now it's so much fun because they're, they're, <laughs> that's a real simple project to do. And then I just go in, two things. I put some little string bows, which I showed you earlier how to do. Okay, kind of tie it around the trunk. Isn't that nice? Very simple. Then I take the handle of the brush, just dot around. There we go. And, it, and see, that is such an easy project. And it looks so nice when you put it on your plates and your glasses and entertain with it. It's fun. Before we go, I want to come back to our teddy bear now and put his face on. Now that's dried up, the scruffy brush kind of puts so much paint, you want to give it time to dry. I see how I touched the nose and moved it around a little bit. With the eyes, I like sometimes to be really teeny. And that's up to you. You can play with them. See, I can make them a little bit bigger if I want to. And then I'm going to put a little bit of water because I am going to make his little smile and maybe some eyebrows, OK? Now, what I'm going to do is I put the first line down. And then it's very easy to go from side to side. And then put a little smile and then little eyebrows. And see, those make it so cute. And then you can come back up, put a little bit of highlight if you choose. And that was a thick paint, not inky paint. I hope the things we learned today will help you embrace the fall season with more color than ever before.
The One Stroke Video Library Series featuring Donna Dewberry is presented by Plaid Enterprises Incorporated, bringing quality paints, mediums, stencils, and other tools to painters worldwide.